Hey everybody, welcome back to Amanda Marie NP, where on this channel I'm just sharing with you my journey of becoming a family nurse practitioner. So if you're in healthcare at all, this may interest you. If you're getting ready to get started in your clinicals, then these kind of experience videos might be beneficial for you so that you know what to expect. So today I'm just gonna share with you about my women's health clinical. Today is my very first day with my new preceptor. And unfortunately, we're already nine weeks into the 10 week women's health class and I should have actually technically probably finished my 150 clinical hours in women's health. However, I could not find a preceptor. So if you find yourself in that situation, this video might be helpful for you. I'm going to share with you a couple of tips along the way on how you too can find a preceptor. And if you're struggling, I'll go ahead and link a video up top here and somewhere down in the description box sharing with you all of the tips that I have for you up until this point on how to find a preceptor. Okay, everybody. So day one is down. All right. Where do we even begin? It was so exciting. Like, I can't even tell you how exciting it was. Um, it has been raining all day, so that's nice. But I really didn't get to see much of it, obviously, because I've been inside all day. I was so excited for this rotation. It's something I'm kind of passionate about I'm intrigued by I think it's a really fascinating um, field to work in so that's really awesome um, the doctor that I am with she is just very knowledgeable very patient friendly takes time for her patients which is important um, obviously is very important especially in women's health because I don't even know how to say it maybe but I'm an emotional person so I feel like other women probably <laughs> um, you know, we all have emotions that we have to filter and kind of decipher. And we had one interesting case today I wanted to share with you. I told you I'll tell you some of the uh, patients that we see. So we had a patient today who was pregnant and she had the uh, femora and the horizon um, carrier blood work completed. And both of them came back and one of the components of each of the tests showed up either inconclusive or um, it just wasn't reading correctly. And the super awesome thing was today we ended up having a meeting with the genetic um, counselor. They came, it was a luncheon. They brought lunch for everybody in the office. So that was really awesome. I had a Southwest chicken avocado salad. Yeah, it was really good. But anyways, so we had this genetic counselor person come in and talk to us over the lunch. And what we ended up finding out is the last time that they had this exact same situation happen where one of each of this particular tests were inconclusive. It turns out that the mother actually had an extra Y, or I'm sorry, an extra X chromosome, which is really, really interesting. So the triple X um, diagnosis or 47 comma um, XXX is the way that you would see that written out, um, medically speaking. And so I was doing some reading about that genetic abnormality. And the crazy thing is, is she would have never found out that she had that had she not had both of those genetic or those um, testings completed, which is interesting because insurance companies I was educated today just recently started covering those studies. So for her to have already had one pregnancy, healthy delivery, she's a healthy woman, no issues whatsoever with her health. And it's just so, I guess, odd that now she's going to go obviously to the genetic counselor and have this in-depth um, conversation and have a karyotype performed on her and try to see if in fact she does have this extra X chromosome. So she kind of, as a patient, didn't really know exactly how to take that, which I don't think any of us really would. Um, but the reassuring thing is, is it's indicative that there's probably no, um, you know, muscular dystrophy or any other chromosome abnormality with the baby. It's something with the mother is the reason why the tests showed the way that they did the results. So that was like, I wonder how many times I'm going to say like today. That was a very interesting case. And then to be able to see that Marina replaced today, um, that was very, very interesting. All of the patients were acceptive of me being in the room and open with that, which I really appreciated that. I thought that that was really amazing. Um, I know sometimes as a patient, it's a little uncomfortable, especially in the women health arena to have 
you know, people just gawking at you. So of course I tried to be as respectful as possible. I was able to measure the fundal height on a patient, which that was kind of interesting. Um, we assessed fetal heart tones on a patient. We had one patient who was starting to have some urinary incontinence, a fairly young woman. And she, the doctor talked about how it was probably two different things that were occurring and she could either have a surgical intervention and a medication um, for both of the issues to treat both, or she could just start out with the medication, which is what the patient chose to do. And she put her on um, oxybutin at five milligrams, the extended release. So she'll only have to take that once a day. So I'll, Again, I just feel like we had a wide variety, a wide range of medical diagnoses to see today and patient experiences. It was a really great first day women's health clinical rotation for my family nurse practitioner program. If you have any questions about women's health specific to diagnoses, specific to um, what you get to do, see um, what you should take with you, any questions like that at all as it pertains to women's health, go ahead and comment that below this video. And again, I will link below some other really helpful videos that I think that you might be interested in seeing. I can't wait to make another video. I think I'll recap tomorrow as well. I'm not sure if I'll put that in this video or include it in another one. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to build the channel here to grow with other healthcare professionals who are interested in furthering their nursing education. I'm super, super excited to see you guys in the comment section below. Comment and let me know what school are you attending or what school are you thinking about attending? Yep become an NP with me. I'm just an average Jane doing my thing and I'd love to have you join me. I'll see you in the next video.